So you want to know like an interesting fun fact about like a scientific fact about how like Israelis don't belong in the Middle East? What? So Israel has the highest rate of skin cancer in the Middle East. That's a white people disease. That's a white people disease. That's a disease. white people disease, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's some upyield problems. <laughs> Are Israelis white? <laughs> Welcome to Libtards and Shy. Here, we discuss liberalism and what's stopping its progress, all while drinking way too much Arabic tea, which is called Shy. So, come on in. kind of an interesting little dichotomy. And I feel like it represents the United States very well, but it's about Joe Biden. In July of 1986, the uh, Congress had passed sanctions against the South African regime of... Apartheid. Uh, the uh, South African apartheid regime. Mm-hmm. And the Republican White House, run by Ronald Reagan, vetoed it. And Joe Biden, who's a senator at the time, is kind of lashing out at in a congressional hearing against one of Reagan's you know top men um, and he says quote I am ashamed of the lack of moral backbone in this administration end quote that's on par for Biden right the Republican Party would go on to step out of line with their president and when a two-thirds majority they worked with the Democrats and they overturned Reagan's veto and they passed sanctions and when Nelson Mandela was asked years later after the dismantle apartheid, eight years later, it's in 1994, mm-hmm. was asked what role sanctions played. He said that sanctions were an essential component to the dismantling of the apartheid state. That same year in 1986, a month later, Biden would also say in Congress, if Israel did not exist, the United States would have to invent her in order to protect our interests. So that's that's a yes. little fishier. Yes, the United States would have to invent one to protect our interests. So how is it, this is not the story about one man, but really a collective national conscious. How can a society like the United States or Europe or the West in general, in the same breath, correctly demonize, villainize, and sanction the South African apartheid regime, but sits blithely by, and not only ignores or turns a, turns its back on what's going on in Israel and the apartheid treatment of Palestinians, but is... Hold on. You in, said apartheid treatment. Apartheid treatment of Palestinians. So you are just so we have, we're on the same page here. Yeah, of We're course. being clear. And we don't drift into Kanye territory. <laughs> no, we don't want to drift into Kanye territory. No, 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 no. Neither one of us are musically talented to back that up. No. Anyways, not that he can back that up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyways. Uh, enough racism there's like a yeah, rap yeah, to yeah. racism ratio yeah, yeah you need this many Jesus' walks to say this many bad things about Jews <laughs> <laughs> no okay position so we're being clear yeah you are claiming insinuating claiming I'm not claiming alone but yes okay okay I'm not saying you're alone I don't know yet where this is going sure you are claiming that currently in Israel today there is an apartheid state I am claiming this along with Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu, and several former Israeli prime ministers. Posthumously. And the... Posthumously. Yeah, Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu are dead. But they didn't give the quote when they're dead. No, that's why I said posthumously. Does, does that? I thought you only if you like receive an Oscar af, after you die, if you received it posthumously. No, but you're claiming them on behalf of them posthumously. Well, they visited Palestine when they were alive. Well, I did not know this. <laughs> okay. Um, former Israeli prime ministers, former Mossad chiefs, and um, Amnesty International, the Human Rights Watch, um, and then Beit Salam, which okay. is a Israeli Jewish human rights organization. Okay, so it's a somewhat substantiated claim. It is a humongous body of scholarly okay. legal work that has defined Israel as an apartheid regime 
by looking at the comparisons of the struggles of what Palestinians have undergone and comparing it to what South Africans went to, by looking at it through the context of international law, by looking at it through the Apartheid Convention of 1973 and the Roman Statues of 1998. Okay. According to these statues, it states that a cr- the crime against humanity of apartheid under the Apartheid Convention and the Roman Statues and customary international law is committed when any inhuman or inhumane act is perpetrated in the context of an institutionalized regime of systematic oppression and domination by one racial group over another. And this is done so with the intention to maintain the current system. Okay, so there's a large body of people who agree with you. Including many Israelis. Including many Israelis. Who and are it's Jewish. Too. It's Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela were on board with this shit. This they, has been in the mainstream. The word apartheid is an Afrikaans word. Meaning apartness or separate, yeah. And so when the very people who suffered, who led the resistance movement for the, the people who word. suffered against the word that was invented to yeah, suffer yeah, yeah. them, are telling you that, it, for example, Nelson Mandela goes on and says, you know, um, that our, our freedom is incomplete. The dismantling of apartheid is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. Or when Desmond Tutu visited Palestine, he said that it was eerily familiar to my experiences in South Africa and how... Uh, ambulances are not allowed to go into the cities to save injured people or there are freedom of movement Shit. Uh, freedom of movement is restricted uh, or or families are separated home people's homes are dispossessed well they would know and so um it is not just a fact of it's not just a feeling okay apartheid is a serious legal claim that i am making that many others are making that is not a criticism of Jews, but is a full force rebuking, rebuttal, and criticism okay. of Israeli Zionist policy, which has dominated Israeli political thought since the inception of the country. Okay. And it did not begin in 1948. It has begun since the Balfour Agreement of 1917. Okay, so that I knew, but that's pretty much my entire understanding of Israel is that it was essentially a British invention. Yes, it is. By the Balfour Act, which is in 17, 1917? 1917. Yeah. And again, I'm not bringing up the Balfour Act because of some Kanye stuff. Like, I, I'm not here saying, well, you know, former Prime Minister, British Prime Minister Jonathan uh, uh, Balfour is, you know, who he's sending the letter to. No, yeah, he's sending I get what it to you're Julian saying. Rothschild. No, I get what you're saying. But like on a surface level, when you make a claim like that, it does come across as like anti-Semitic. Like, right. You, and, like and, you've, you watch my initial reaction where I'll go, well, buddy, I just want to make sure that- No, we, no, no. Of course. Of course. Here. And anti-Semitism is a real problem. It's a real problem that we yeah. ha- we 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 have to address. A little bit. So, so um, and has not gone away, you know. And so, what does it mean to criticize Israel and not be anti-Semitic? It is a criticism of a group of people, right? Who are either supporting the government and the government itself so, and the political ideology which is zionism which is zionism okay yes. and just for clarification let's define what zionism is real quick like a little blurb zionism is a political movement that was primarily birthed in the late 19th century in Europe by a man named Theodor Herzl it is a political non-religious a political nationalist movement for Jews to establish a homeland okay from the religious wing of the Zionist movement, which is a minor wing, because again, Herzl, Weissman, Mira Gold, David Ben Gurion, who are the founders is. of Israel, were ardent atheists. He was born in like fucking All of Holland the, or some shit, right? Uh, ben Gurion was born in Poland. Mira Gold, uh, Go- Golda Meir was born in Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, Theodore Herzl was born in Austria Hungary. Yeah. Uh, Lieber- 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 Lieberman was born in Belarus. Right. These people, uh, uh, the current prime minister, Netanyahu, Went to high school and college in America. If these people are in America, they're white dudes. They're white. They're white people. Okay. They are white people. Okay. They are in Europe. And the whole function of Zionism, which, by the way, has no real, um, if, like, there's no real culture. It has no similar language. Kind of all, white people. All these Jews speak different languages. Mm-hmm. They eat different foods. They belong to different nationalities. And especially in the late 19th century. They identified with their national societies more than they identified with a grand religious 
Jewish state. So the confusing part to a lot of people is that Zionism is a predominantly written by secularists. Mm -hmm. There has always been a section of the Jewish community that's wanted to return to the homeland, which is, you know, Palestine. And so there's a real, um, but the, but the, the modern movement starting in the 19th century is wholeheartedly run by secularists. The founders of Israel founded a secular state. And so when we're looking at the current administration of Netanyahu and his return to power, and, and this, we're not going to go into this in a different episode, mm-hmm. but just, just to clarify, when we're seeing the ultra right wing religious Jewish Orthodox movements taking over political reigns, we see that this is a radical shift among the Jewish community. Well, no wonder Americans don't. But however... And by Americans, I mean myself included. I, no wonder we don't identify with this argument because you essentially just described America as well. Right. But here's the thing. Founded by secularists, right wings slowly getting more popularity. But Jews are a minority. There's a lot of parallels there. But Jews are a minority among the Zionist movement nowadays. Right wing evangelicals are a minority among Americans. But I have the parallels there. No, sure. no, no, no. But you you mentioned right. You mentioned white evangelical Christians. Yeah. They are the majority Zionists. Evangelical Christians are the majority. What do you mean? Like evangelical they, Christians are, are, the, Jews? are the number one supporters of the state of Israel. And Israel in this day receives popular support from ultra right wing white supremacist fascist groups and governments, including Hungary, Poland, when Bolsonaro in Brazil Why? came Just to power. Go away Jews. Is that, it's like, not go away Jews. It's that when you look at at the conflict, which I don't believe it, even the word using the word conflict is accurate. What I what I call it is a Palestinian liberation movement. But when you look at the Palestinian conflict in Israel, and you look at it through the lens of religion, you start to see. You look at it and you say, "Oh, this is an unclear picture." There's this big consensus that the story is thousands of years old. But if you go back thousands of years old and call this a, a religious war between Jews and Muslims, thousands of years ago. Islam didn't exist. That's a good point. You know, this is a, this is a, if we look at the 1878 census during the Ottoman Empire, which ruled the land of Palestine, it was 87% Muslim, it was 10% Christian, it was 3% Mizrahi Jews, which are, all of them spoke Arabic. Mizrahi it, Jews are the ones that actually have an ancestral claim to the homeland. Mm-hmm. The people that like were yeah. originally there. Like after the there. Roman diaspora, a lot of them went all over the world, mostly to Europe. Yeah. And among that small population... That stayed. That stayed. Mizrahi Jews. They're Mizrahi Jews. But by gotcha. the way, a lot of them, when the Roman Empire solidified its cultural footholding, a lot of them became Christian. And remember, Jews are not the only people who live there. Yeah, and then once the Ottomans took over, a lot of them became Muslim. A lot of... Uh, not the Ottomans, the, the early Muslims. Or the early Muslims, yeah. Yeah, this is like in the 7th century, right? So Jerusalem was is is so these that's that, that mixture of like some of these Jewish descendants being turning Christian, some of them turning Muslim. That mixture is the Arab people now. That's the Palestinian people. I am that. I am that mixture. You have Jewish and Christian descendants. You mean. Oh, I have to. It's just statistics. Hmm. If my ancestry comes from the Levant, which is Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, yeah. Palestine, there's no way I don't have... It's impossible. Yeah, kind of like how I'm Irish, and there's no way no one in my family was, wasn't Catholic. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so um, you have... Uh, Zionism is a political movement, and it's and people can talk about Zionist theory like they talk about communist theory. And they can be good communism, bad communism, good Zionism, bad Zionism. But I'm not here to discuss theory with you. Mm-hmm. Because, Max, when we look at the the real politique, the facts on the ground. Are we getting French now? Okay. Oh hell yeah, the <laughs> the the policy of the Israeli Zionist government is what this episode is about. There will be other episodes in the future about the full history of Zionism. Current. There will be an episode about dissecting deeply what the European Ashkenazi Jewish claim to Palestine is, mm-hmm. and 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 why they think they have an exclusive one. No, right, I got you. But well, you're talking about current. Today, I am talking policies. about the real politic on the ground now and what has been the status quo for the past 70 years since the inception of the country. And how it not only parallels to apartheid, but is Is apartheid, apartheid in and of its own right. All right, can you give an example? Absolutely. So, for example, in the founding of the state of Israel, there was in the 50s, there was a law called the right of return law. It's a, the nationality law. That if you're Jewish, you can come back to the homeland. No, it's so much more than that. It's that if you have... One Jewish grandparent. Okay. So if you are a quarter Jewish. Okay. Anywhere in the world. Okay. 
Even though you've never been to Palestine, you don't speak Hebrew, you don't practice Judaism, you have no cultural connection. Today, today you can get on a plane, land in Ben-Gurion Airport, and they will hand you a passport, and you can buy a home, and you can work there legally. But me, or Rashida Tlaib, or any other Arab or Palestinian who was born there, whose parents were born there, or their grandparents were born there, and were forcefully removed through the barrel of a gun. They cannot return by law. Forcibly removed is an interesting one, because that was a main signature of South African apartheid. I think like three and a half million people were dispersed. It was like Dis- one of the largest absolutely. like disbursements of population ever absolutely. in human history. I mean, people people act like Being all the Palestinians into, like, live the, in the West Bank. What were they called? The Swa... The, 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 Essentially, just like ten fucking houses, shanty towns. The shanty towns, yeah. yeah. I mean, in Brazil, they're called favelas. I don't know the Afrikaans word for it. There's an Afrikaans word. I'm spacing on it right now, but yeah. But essentially, and you're saying the same thing is happening with Palestinians in Israel. I mean, let's just think about it this way: for, when, when the state was founded, they removed about 800,000 800, of them. This is called the Nakba. This okay. is the catastrophe, right? Um, Palestinians. When people think of Palestine, they think of the West Bank and Gaza. They're forgetting well, yeah, that, that's how it's They're forgetting that thousands, hundreds, and thousands, and, and even millions of Palestinians and Arabs lived in what is now mainland Israel. Tel Aviv is Yaffa, Haifa. These are, these are all cities that with Arabic names. Hebron is Al-Khalil. These are all towns that have been ethnically cleansed of their indigenous populations, renamed, rebuilt. This is, this is clear-cut. Again, sounds like America. Right. It doesn't just sound like America. It sounds like Australia and New Zealand and, and South, South Africa. Africa and Brazil and Argentina. Right. It, it, the only difference is uh, the settlers came from the west and went east instead of the other way around. You know, that's the only real difference. I mean, it's y- y- the Amnesty International states the definition of apartheid. It says, and it says the words uses a regime of systematic oppression and domination of one racial group over another. Forcibly removing people from their homes, that's sequest- one sequestering them into. I'm assuming it's not good conditions if you, if so, so many people are making this claim. Sorry? Like the where the uh, Palestinians are being forced to live now. They're living in refugee camps. Yeah. And uh, the ones who have been refugees who have left the country, mm-hmm. they're living in neighboring countries in refugee camps. Then you have now massive population crises in Gaza. This is a, it's one of the most densely populated places on earth. And it's an open air prison. So when people say Palestine or the West Bank or the PLO, like the Palestinian Authority, this is a very facetious argument it's very deceptive because it when you look at a map yeah. yeah it acts like it has authority but again there is facts on the ground there is a real politique that we have to recognize you really like that french shit okay it's perfect for this term <laughs> it's actually it's, in, it's invented for colonial constructs <laughs> have you ever read wicked of the earth uh, earth of uh, uh, frank fons or uh what's his name uh the author oh, franz fennan yeah you're talking about right yeah that's i know story. who you're talking about i haven't read that particular one though but there are facts on the ground. Israel controls. Haitian dude, French educated, philosopher, um, right? Um, Franz Fanon, I think is the name. I I, I think so. Uh, let me, I think it would be, yeah, it's Franz Fanon. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, there's a real facts on the ground. Let's just go down the list. There are the Amnesty International, Beit Salam, and Human Rights Organization, categorized it in a few categories. One is land. Land is seen by the Israeli military and the Israeli government as a resource that is to be gathered and Judaized for the benefit of the Jewish population. So um, they don't allow building permits for homes for Palestinians. When Palestinians leave certain regions, they're not able to come back. Um, They're not, um, what's it called? While Israeli settlements throughout the West Bank are constantly being built. So you have an issue of land theft. Uh, there is what they call the security barrier, which is a fucking wall, twice the height of the Berlin Wall, that separates the West Bank from mainland Israel. Hmm. A wall, you say? A wall. A wall. Yes. Where which have is, I heard that before? Right. They've been building that since 2002, and that has stolen a bunch of land. You also have the idea that there's a restriction of freedom of movement. So Palestinians in the West Bank cannot see Palestinians in Gaza. And Palestinians in, in the Golan Heights cannot see Palestinians in West Bank. And the ones living in East Jerusalem have to go through checkpoints. If you want to visit that your would... family as a Palestinian, you have to go through either and be 
subjected to horrific harassment in Ben Gurion Airport, and that's if you have an Israeli passport, or you can go. You have to go through Jordan, cross the river, sure. a go through an Israeli checkpoint, then go through a Palestinian checkpoint to keep everyone separated. Right, because if you keep and, separated, they can't come together, and you, they don't come together. I, again, this is the definition that. of apartheid. The definition of apartheid. That's one a, of one of the acts. Of one of the acts of domination and oppression is because by subjugate by denying them the right to move and the right to see each other it quote stifles their ability to develop communities end quote and this is exactly what they are doing well, yeah it's a, one of the best surefire ways to uh, squash our resistance so there is there is like this there's also no dancing around this thing i mean um let's just put it this way okay jewish supremacy which is you know a rose by any other name is just a sweet you know here's another name for it it's white supremacy yeah because this, the this founders is a, of zionism were all, all as white. you've just said they're all white europeans all white dudes and they're in all, any other context they're white dudes but in this particular instance they just so happen to be jewish and and and, and this then they is, claim the anti-semitic card anytime someone right and this says claim it, no this starting claim, to get where you're going for no no but this claim you're saying they claim the anti-semitic card the claim to their judaism is very weak because the only real claim in Zionism, which again is written mostly by secularists, is inherently a biblical and religious one. You know, it's, oh, we all come from this religious order. And um, it, to me, it's like, and first of all, if we take the Torah as a historical text, which it isn't. Yes. Even in the Torah, the Jews escaping Egypt and going to this land. In, in that text, it already admits and recognizes that other people were living there. That there were Assyrians and Greeks and all these other types of people and yeah. Armenians. There, th that there was already this established land. So there's a law passed in 2018 called the Jewish, like it's basically the, the, the Jewish home law. Uh, it's basically stating Jewish supremacy as the policy of Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the current prime minister, tweeted out, I'm quoting him here. The Jewish people have an exclusive and unquestionable right to all areas of the land of Israel, said the Prime Minister Netanyahu. All? At the, all. All. Said Prime Minister Netanyahu at the end of the most extreme right-wing Israeli government ever. Quote, the government will promote and develop settlements in all parts of the land of Israel, in the Galil, which is up north, in the Negev, which is the desert to the south, in the Golan, which is land they stole from Syria, and in Judea and Sumeria, which is their words for the West Bank. That's some sadistic version of a Churchill speech, dude. I mean, we're talking about... <sighs> You're talking about one of the most... I mean, this is such settler colonial language. And it's fascist, too. And you can see that in the... That's hella ironic. It is very ironic. Israeli but... fascists. But you see it. you see it with the fact that Israeli flags... Are being held at the January 6th insurrection. You see that neo Nazi yeah, groups. I those. Yeah, you see neo Nazi groups and right wing governments like Modi in India or Bolsonaro in Brazil or um, Orban in Hungary are huge supporters of Israel. But really, what it comes down to the claim of apartheid and the fact that they think they have an exclusive right, which is crazy to me because this is like an American who worships the god Jupiter is claiming that he has right over Italy, over all the Italians, because the Italians have abandoned their their ancient religion of, of, of paganism, and they've abandoned their ancient language of Latin and now speak Italian. And so he can come in at the barrel of a gun and dispossess these people and dominate them. That's, wow. And, and here's the fascism behind it. Here's the fascism. We've heard this before. We say, oh, Jews make up a disproportionate amount of scientists. Oh, Ashkenazi Jews have the highest IQs. Oh, we're, we've our tech boom is responsible because of our culture, because we value education, because we're so smart. There is this language of it's eerily their, familiar. Their success eerily familiar. is not due to the basically infinite money that they get from the United States. Yeah. Which because, all which all research points to it, like right. money, wealth, They're resource. The, we give them more financial aid than anyone IQ, else. Yeah. Right. So it's not that. It's because of their culture, because their IQ, because of who they are as a people. And so this really comes into the fascist narrative of we are the superior race, and it is not only moral for us to take this land and develop it. How have they responded to this? What do you mean, how have they responded to this? Like if these many people are claiming that it's an apartheid state, how they've there's, obviously had to address it. There's, there's, um, Especially former people within their own government. There's three people who were denying apartheid. I've heard three excuses. 
One I've heard is the complete shutdown of the debate by just saying, oh, Hamas are terrorists, you're supporting terrorism, they send rockets into Israel, we have a right to defend ourselves. Or they frame the narrative and Israel has a right to exist and we're just, you know, uh, we're trying to solve peace and this bar these barriers and these measures. But even if you believe Israel has a right to exist, you probably shouldn't treat the fucking people this way. No, they're, they claim that the, like they basically up. imply on in the news and a lot of it, the pundits including Ben Shapiro, imply that the pop... Is he a pundit? Do we have to call him a pundit? Sure. Can we just call him a little fucktard? We can call him a fucktard. I prefer fucktard. It is implied fucktard through the Shapiro. media. The fucktard Shapiro and a lot... Of, by the way, it's not just right-wingers. A lot of left-wingers. This whole entire episode is to talk to people who are on the left wing who think they could be progressive and support apartheid at the same time, and you can't. No, because on a, again, like out of face value, just as soon as someone makes this claim, you instantly go anti-Semitic. Wasn't right. there like a senator or some shit? Who Rashida got, Tlaib. Yeah. Yeah, she's the first Palestinian American... Uh, House of Representative. I mean, yeah, she got fucking like ousted, right? And so you I mean you got, in the media. You 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 have to look at it this way. There's one they talk about Hamas, and they say, oh, these are Hamas talking points. Two, they say that the 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 Palestinian element is so dangerous. They're implying this. The Palestinian element is so dangerous or so terroristic that these are the only way for us to live. That the word, they're just inherently terrorists. They don't say it like that, but they'll say that, oh... No, but that's what you hear. Yes. And that's, the, and that's, that's what what's I, implied, yes, and yes. that's what's digested. Right. Or they'll just straight up say, uh, they'll straight up deny what's happening on the ground, and they'll say, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East, which it's not, because, you know, uh, Lebanon has several elections, and Tunisia was uh, a democracy, um, uh, and what's it called? There's several other regions uh s several other uh what's it called also countries people. iraq just had elections iran votes turkey is a democracy so like are also, they can you they really claim to be a democracy are they no no uh, let's just be honest is iraq and is iran and is turkey and is lebanon which by the way all these governments no i don't necessarily like i don't think iran's a good place i think turkey's democracy Hot is failing. Take. right <laughs> I, I don't think I, I think iran's uh turkey's uh, government uh, democracy is slipping but this they, they use these these pr stunts like we support LGBT people. No one else in the region does. Okay? But then they just passed a law saying that they have the right to discriminate based off religious grounds. They say they're the only democracy in the Middle East when they don't let, and this is finally another point of apartheid, they don't let all of the Palestinians that they occupy, that they control the boundaries of mm -hmm. in Gaza right. and in the West Bank, which amounts to about 5.5 million people, they cannot vote. They cannot participate in politics. They cannot dissent. And when they publicly protest, they are shut down with police. That doesn't sound like a democracy. So it is a Again, It sounds like America, but... Israel is either... But black people can vote in America. Israel can either be all Jewish or it can be democratic. But because of the demography, because of the demographics on the ground, it cannot be both. And I'm sorry, but we're old worlders. We don't die to smallpox. You will have to kill us all. We are 50% of the population, and that's of the Palestinians who stayed. There's another 4 million Palestinian refugees. Scared there's a whole the bunch earth. of Palestinians living in Jordan. And there's Palestinians all over the world. So the, the demographics are not... Israel cannot be democratic and Jewish at the same time. So again, I'm going to reiterate, because we're coming towards the end. Israel is a system of apartheid because it imposes a institutionalized system of oppression and domination of one group over the other. It does this by allowing Jews or anybody with just a quarter of quote-unquote Jewish ancestry and their spouse to be able from anywhere in the world to move to Israel today and get a passport while denying... White, sorry? And this is done through the white colonial invention of right, Zionism. Right, right. And, and, and yeah. it doesn't allow yeah. Palestinians who they themselves were either born in Palestine or their parents were born in Palestine or their grandparents were born in Palestine to return. Another point is the, the way land and permits are dispensed. The Department of the Interior, barely if any in the past 10 years, has issued Palestinians building permits, which means they're in a catch-22 where they have to either build illegally and then the Israeli government knocks their buildings down because they say it's built without a permit. While issuing building permits, Jesus. while issuing building permits to Israelis to be able to build homes, even in land that the UN does not even recognize is Israel, which is the Palestinian-occupied territories, the West Bank. 
There is also now the issue. So we talked about land. We talked about immigration. Now we're going to talk about freedom of voting movement. Voting disenfranchisement. Yep. Oh, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about voting disenfranchisement then. We'll yeah, come back. They can't fucking vote. Right. They cannot vote. And the Israeli, the Arabs who live in mainland Israel are such a small demographic minority that they don't have actual any power. And the establishment basically operates to discredit their ability to organize. You also have... Well, yeah, you scattered them. And, you al- and, right. You also have the lack where the of... the freedom of movement then comes in. Bingo. So you have the freedom of movement, which is that an Israeli with a single passport can go anywhere in the region, but kinda Palestinians... Like kind of like we can go to Arizona right now. Right. When just driving on the Right. Or New field. York or Hawaii or Alaska, we right? Can, yep. And they, uh, Palestinians, have a East Jerusalem permit, a West Bank permit, a Gaza permit, and a Israel mainland permit. Permit. All of which need to file separately and individually. And if you're in Israel, Pal- so Palestine. There's a bureaucratic red tape nonsense. Oh, of course. And if you look at the pictures, do. there are huge lines. They're massive lines. It takes hours, sometimes days, to get into Palestine if you're coming in from Jordan mm-hmm. to visit your family. If you are a Israeli, if you're a Palestine living in Israel proper and you want to move to the best bank, it's no problem. But other way around, it gets way harder. Huge problem. So there is also two legal regimes. There has been in the past 20 years. More than separate regimes, like completely two different separate like legal apart regimes. regimes. Oh mm. my god, like they're almost apart. Apart. There have been more than three hundred and fifty children who have been killed in the past ten years. There has been zero IDF soldiers or military police who have ever been arrested and convicted for the willing murder of, of any children. Palestinian or children or unarmed civilians. There is a disproport. It is complete asymmetric warfare you're talking about people who are throwing bottle rockets without explosive tips and most of the rockets never land because of the iron dome system that america gave to israel while they are oh, the carpet defense, bombing the gaza defense system is the iron dome thing right. About, right okay they're carpet bombing gaza and they are killing journalists okay. famously last may the american journalist uh, Shireen Abakle right. was killed by a sniper and forensic evidence has showed that the sniper clearly saw her press vest before pulling and the trigger anyone. and shot her. Press vest, just so everyone's clear, is like a, hey, don't shoot This me. is an international bulletproof vest with the yeah. word press on it that is recognized everywhere by to not US. kill them. Yeah. yeah. And they shot them and, and America didn't bat an eye. But That's then they get mad when- Geraldo Rivera can go to fucking Afghanistan and do whatever the fuck he does. Speaking of Geraldo Rivera, he's one of the only people on Fox who's openly criticized Israeli policy. Ugh, that's not... I that's mean, not, That's a really low moral yeah, bar. Yeah, dude. That's a really low moral if bar. If Geraldo Rivera's going like, hey, there's some fuck shit going on here, then you are, you are fucking up. You're fucked. Yeah. I mean, let's just look at maps of like, if you look at a map of the United States from the 1780s and watch Western settlement and the removal of indigenous people, you can do the same smaller thing... And smaller and smaller Right. You can do the same thing from 1946 to, 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 to today where you see Zionist, basically... Um, Colonial settling of the land, and it's just become even in the West Bank, which is the largest enclave, it's cut up fractally by hundreds of settlements. And guess what? There's separate segregated roads that Israelis get to drive on, and that Palestinians don't get to drive on. So they're separate roads. They're they're separate. Israeli roads are apart from the they're apart from Palestinian roads. Apart. So here's the thing: when I hear Hamas, Hamas this, Hamas that, um, let's just talk about facts. We're talking about a quote-unquote democracy that is a nuclear power, one of the largest GDPs on Earth, that's backed by the entire West, and it needs to have the same moral standards. Is Israel an official nuclear power, or is it just like widely commonly accepted? It is, without a doubt, a nuclear power, whether we officially recognize it or not. I know they kept it a secret. They don't officially claim their nuclear power, just yes. for clarification, but yes. they fucking have them. Every, every CIA agent has confirmed yeah it, the cia has confirmed it's they have they have nuclear bombs and there's one thing the cia can do well i think they've already admitted it. i think the, i'm not sure on this i think the israeli government has admitted it okay i think we have satellite footage of them testing bombs i think it's impossible now well we be like the most people know that israel's had nukes since what the 70s the sex, 60s or 70s yeah. yeah yeah i mean uh so again this is not a re- this is not a religious conflict this is a white Doesn't versus like indigenous conflict this conflict does not go by thousands of years and as you'd say it's not a conflict it's not a conflict, right? It's a it is a 115 year old liberation movement. Is really what it is. You cannot be a liberal, you cannot be a progressive, and support. You cannot, in the name of this episode, you cannot fight for abolition at home, and not just condone, but with your own tax dollars support, and be silent in this support. Si- support 
apartheid abroad. I don't know if we said this already, but just for clarification again. We give billions of dollars. The U.S. is the number, like, I think we give more money to Israel than any other thing ever. Yeah, we the give. The only thing we spend more on is, like, our own defense. Right. Among all the foreign aid countries that are, 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 give money from the United States, Israel gets more than right. any other country. We give, we so we are. By a huge. We friend, are like directly huge. complicit in this apartheid. We're funding it apparently. And 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 here's the thing. This isn't like breast cancer where we know about it and we need more we need more awareness. This is something where just you being aware of it and saying yuck this is bad actually does some benefits. If you look at a pupil um if you look at a pupil that was recently taken, it's showing that Palestinian support among Americans is growing and Palestinians uh and, and Israeli um uh, what's it called? An animus towards Israel is uh, g- increasing. So, of course, America is still a super Israel, pro-Israel country. But well, yeah. just just for for reference, two years uh, in 2018, 62 percent of Americans sympathized with Israel, and only 16 uh, uh, percent uh, of Americans sympathized with Israel. Now it's 26 percent sympathized with Palestine, and. Um, Sorry, it was 62 60, it, to 16. It went from 16 to 26 for Palestine. Yeah, so it went from 16 to 26 for Palestine, now in 2022, and it went from um, uh, 62 to 55. And then the number of not-sures went up. So we are we are changing the narrative. Social media probably has a big role to play. Of that. course it is, because we no longer can hide when police kill media. children. You can't hide when Israel bombed the associated press building in gaza you can't hide when a they literally sniped domes. a fucking journalist they sniped a journalist and by the way the only reason we care about her is she's american and just so that people don't say oh, oh she's a yeah. muslim terrorist she's christian she's a christian arab palestinian american which is probably it's the what missing white girl thing right kind of the same shit by the way she's an incredible journalist like she worked for al jazeera washington post and 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 when we when her body was being carried and giving a pasha's honorific which she's being carried around all the sites of old Jerusalem. The police attacked the funeral procession. They attacked the people carrying the coffin. The coffin fell to the ground. They attacked the people burying the journalist that they killed with their own bullets. And so it is important to understand that this is not funeral? this is not during her funeral. It's on videotape. This is not a Jesus. rebuttal of Jews. In fact, Beit Salam is a Jewish organization. People like Norman Finkelstein, like Katie Halper, John Stewart. Fran Leibowitz. These are people who are Jews, who have family members who survived in the Holocaust, who are openly on the side of justice in this. This is one of the most black and white issues. And we're going to spend many episodes in the future talking about what is Zionism? What is the claim? Uh, how did this come to be? What are the solutions? Today is not that. Today is a clear, clear case of what the show is, where I stand, you stand, which is that it is the scholarly complete historical consensus of anyone who wants to be remotely honest what even if you like israel even if you are a zionist it is undeniable that the the physical legal systems that function in the state of israel is enacting a system of oppression and apartheid and domination and apartheid and you cannot be a liberal and support the israeli state you, you just can't and 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 I think I think that's where we end it. You just can't. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. You have a good day. Libtards and Shy with Max and Mansour. Join us again next week for an all new episode and please remember to like and subscribe on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Wherever you are and whenever you are, have a good morning, good evening, or good night. <clears throat> what? Don't wait around to like after the credits. There's nothing weird there. about drunk enough 
if she ever tried cocaine, like in a joke. Mm-hmm. And without missing a beat, she goes, it was the 80s. What was I supposed to do? 